Hey guys, Nigel here with you, back at the bench, and I've got a review for you today. This is a bit of a surprise review that I wasn't expecting to be doing. Um, had a box arrive, uh, got soaking wet in the rain because the postman left it by the door, which was really great, didn't even knock. Um, so yeah, the box got soaking wet, but luckily what I've got to show you today is all sealed and wrapped in uh, cellophane, so nothing was damaged. Um, so basically what we've got here is some items from a company called David Union. Now this is still all wrapped up, this is the ergonomic pen sander. This has been sent to me by Ed from Premium Hobbies, uh, Premium Hobbies here down in Western Supermare. So if you're in the UK or in Europe and you want to order one of these, Premium Hobbies is the place to go. Go and have a look at the website. Anything you want to get, you've got your Mr. Surfacers and all your Mr. Hobby products and different sanders from Infini. And then you've got all the um, the, the premium designs, um, 3D printed sander holders and everything with all the Infini sanders. Now, go and have a look. Don't forget, NMB10, Nigel's Modeling Bench 10, will get you a 10% discount. Now, unfortunately, he doesn't ship to USA. And I, I, I keep meaning to ask him. I don't think he ships to Canada either. But if you want any of this stuff, this stuff is available worldwide. If you can't find it in a local supplier... Have a look on Google, David 400 pen sander, and it comes up with the actual manufacturers so you can order direct from them in wherever they are. So um, basically, this is what we're going to look at. But first of all, something that came in a little bag on its own here um, is this lovely little thing here. Now, if you follow my channel, you know I'm forever using these pin vices. And one of the biggest issues I have with these is the fact that they have selective collets. Now... There is an advantage in, in that with these selective collets, it'll take you all the way up to quite big. So that's, I think that's 3.2. Uh, whereas this one only goes up to like 1.2, 1.3. But the beauty of this is a lot of the drilling you do is sort of in this area here, you sort of 0.5 up to one mil. And this will hold all of those with this, you're forever having to change collets. For instance, if you're drilling portholes out in the Titanic, you might go from a 1mm to 1.2 with this, you can just do it with this, you need to change collets. So um, this will go actually from 0.1, um, I've just done some drilling with a 0.3 drill and it was lovely, and it'll go all the way up without changing any collets. So I'll show you here, there's a 1.2, 1 1.2 drill, and that will go straight in there, like so, and then you can drill with that. Okay, and that is gripping it. Whereas with this one, you can see I've got the smallest collet here. The 1.2 drill won't go, even a 1mm won't go in there. So it's um, it, it's very good. If you're using your 0.5 or 0.6 for a pilot drill, swap the drill, chuck this in. It's also got a very nice, um, a very nice um, knurled handle. That's the word I was looking for. So you've got a knurled uh, locking ring there. And you've got a knurled handle here for grip. And then the top here spins so that you can sort of put the pressure on. This is how I use them, put the pressure on there. So if you want to use it to drill, you can basically, you put in the pressure onto this end with your hand, okay? And you're just pushing the drill, and you're twisting it with your fingers like so. And it is a really lovely little bit of kit. Really very nice. Nice to have something so small and light because this is quite big and chunky. And, you know, even the weight of this will snap drills off up to sort of 0.6 whereas this won't so if you are drilling your hand slips you sort of you know you snap the drills off straight away whereas with this i don't think you would but um yeah lovely little bit of kit so there we go only trouble is with it being such a small diameter obviously it's not turning as fast as a bigger drill would as a bigger handle would but hey when you're using tiny little drills what's the problem and as you know i tend to use these rather than electric tools i've got this here this is actually, I've seen this available on Amazon again, on sale. This is the Janor little power drill. It's a brilliant little thing, powered by a um, by a micro U or mini USB from your computer. And a uh, great little thing, great little tool. Comes with a couple of collets and a, where is it? It comes with a box here, the selection of little tools, which are pretty much useless, but you get the spare collets in there. But these, I thoroughly recommend this one. Um, it's available on Amazon, so that's another little uh, tool for you to be looking at. But basically, what we're looking at today is these David uh, Union products. So this is the actual drill. This drill 
is this pin vice should I say is 9 95 from premium hobbies so with your 10% discount it's going to be nine pound so I think that's actually a really good price for what is a quite high precision little product it is beautifully made um, and the collet has got a very fine angle on it so it'll give you some really good clamping pressure and yeah really really nice that there's a pin vice out there that goes on such a wide range it says it goes 0.1 to 1 but mine actually will go up to 1 point I think it'll even take a 1.3 drill um, with a little bit of pressure behind it yeah I'll take a 1.3 I'll probably go to 1.4 if I push really hard but yeah 1.3 drill so 0.1 to point to 1.3 that's a pretty good range for such a small little tool so that's something to be looking into so that's your uh, pin vice um, and I also, we've got this here. This is the David 400 ergonomic pen sander. And as you can see, it's still sealed up. I haven't had a look at it at all. I believe it comes with all these different accessories and everything. So you've got a, a large pad there for flat sanding. You've got a small cone there for going into a drilled hole. You've got a circular round diamond burr, or cylindrical, should I say. That's going to go into your, um, in for doing, a, you know, like down in tubes and stuff. Two separate collets here. We've got a flat rectangular. We've got a little angled one for getting into really tight corners, a triangular one for getting into like wing roots and stuff, um, a smaller flat sander, a triangular one, and then this one here for getting into really fine corners. So <clears throat> let's open this up and have a look without stabbing the box. And if this is as good as people say it is, you'll see me using this a lot. Um, basically because for getting into corners and stuff, you know, something like this will be absolutely invaluable. So how are we going to open this box? Some people like to see unboxings, some people don't. If you don't like seeing unboxings, then tough. <laughs> if you do like seeing unboxings, then it's making, making your day. So I can't quite see how we're going to get into this. Okay, so that took some working out. So it's actually an end opening box. You can see it's got these lovely tags on the side. I mean, the, the quality of the packaging is um, is unbelievable. Uh, and when you get in here, again, we've got this beautiful silky black box, um, which has a very tightly fitting lid. And the, the quality of that is, you know, if the packaging is anything to go by, then um, and then we've got our actual sander in here. So this is how it comes. I haven't looked at this. So basically, we've got our sander here, which is very tightly packed. I mean, the, the word tightly is used a lot in this review. Um, just get under here with a pair of tweezers. Just leave that out. So basically, here's the tool. It's very light. Um, in fact, how heavy is it? Let's just see how heavy it is so you can get an idea. But it's, it's, it's extremely light, actually. Um, there we go, it is 112.7 grams, so very light indeed. And um, obviously when you put the tools in the end, that's going to add some weight to it. But um, nice ergonomic feel to it. It's got a grippy, the red bit there is grippy. This is all that sort of smooth black pass that you see in a lot of modern Audis and stuff now. And VWs on the dashboard, you get this, this sort of satin plastic, which if you keep handling it, it starts to go glossy. Got the power input on the back and then we got our on off and variable speed control there now obviously the collet doesn't turn because it's just a forward and aft motion so most sanders are kind of an orbiting motion this is fore and aft so um basically we're getting into the box here again tight fitting so we've got some sanding sheets here and um i don't know what grip they are we'll have a look in a minute so they're all sealed up and then we've got our power supply here which is yeah this is the normal sort of you get these days, you get the power supply there, and then you've got a converter there for whatever whatever country you're in. And I'll bet this does 110 to 240. Yeah, 110 to 240. So same power supply all over the world, which is great if you need spares. Uh, but it is actually a 12 volt, 0.5, 8 watts. So 0.5 amps, 8 watts. So uh, yeah, really common power supply there so you could use it with other tools as well and you've got a normal standard jack on the back uh, we've got a box of tools here which is sealed up and we've got a stand well that's nice it's like a rubbery kind of 
finely plastic so you've got to stand there so that you're not going to keep putting it down and um, damaging your ends and then we've got an instruction manual that box is lovely you, you could actually you know if you're going to give your wife or girlfriend a nice necklace or something you could use this box to put it in for Christmas um, and then we've got an instruction manual here which is probably one of these yes it's the same instruction manual but in 97 different languages so normally English is at the front and yes it is so I say thank you for choosing this uh, electric pen sander giving you some health and safety there and then we've got anti-slip grip linear action heat outlet heat outlet power inlet 12 volts 0.5 amps as I said um, black mandrel for changing heads four jaw design allows four different position yeah, so basically, I'll show you that in a second. What that's got on here, if I just get this open. Just cut through the tape. Get this open. In here, what we've got is all our different heads. So, why can't model manufacturers mould clear plastic like that? Hmm? What, I mean, why, when you look at Mac 2, when you look at the windows in that VC10 kit I've got, they're awful. Um, why can't manufacturers do plastic like that? So we've got our ends here, and as, as it says on, on, said on there, you've got the four positions. In the end of the collet here, you've got slots. So basically that's going to go in there, and it won't turn. So basically you can leave it flat, and you can put some side angle on it if you want to, um, but it won't turn. But you could actually put it in in four different positions. So if you wanted to go underneath, I mean, I, I I don't really know why you wouldn't just do that. I don't know why. I mean, <laughs> would you really want to do that? I don't know. Uh, surely you would just move your hand accordingly. I don't know. Um, so we've got all different sorts of ends on here. And you can see in here, we've got a rectangle for the largest sanding surface effect, effective for large scale jobs. So if you're sanding the bottom of your Titanic hull or, or doing a Spitfire wing, then you've got your large rectangle, which is that one there. Then we've got the square, which is the most versatile head used more often than any other head. So there's your square. Um, we've got a flat rectangle, good for getting into tight spaces. So there's our flat, whoops. Chucking them all over the place here. There's a flat rectangle, which would be good for if you had a Spitfire and you wanted to do the engine cowlings underneath the exhaust. Then we've got the triangular one, um, which is here. This is pointed. That's going to be good for getting down into corners and stuff. This would be particularly good, like on the B52, for getting down in between the engine cowlings, sanding in there. Um, we'll see how good this is at sanding in a minute. But, you know, when you get in with sanding sticks, one of the biggest risks is when you're into a tight spot let me just show you um let me just I'm gonna grab something here to sand I use this arizona funnel um when you're sort of getting into tight spots like in here the, the stick can often get in the way and you might end up sanding a bit off of there if you're trying to get in here whereas with this you're going to get in there and you're not going to risk actually damaging anything um, you could get in there with a skinny stick whatever but you're not going to get into the corners as tight as this hard edges so it has got its benefits guys um so that's your that's your pointy one then we've got the acute trapezoid ideal for v-shaped areas where there is an where there's an area near the tip that does not need to be sanded don't quite know what they're getting at there but um there we go anyway so there's the that's your, your one there with the flat tip so i'm guessing that would be for going up to an edge or something but uh, we'll see how much control we've got on that then we've got the equilateral triangle ideal for use on areas that are narrow in the front and wide on the back mm -hmm. and then we've got the wedge which is a special shape for upright sanding or sanding in a cramped space or grooves so here what they're saying is you would use this um, like that for upright sanding but then why wouldn't you just use that? I don't know. What I can see this being really useful for is getting in behind, um, like in, in F4 Phantom intakes and stuff, getting in behind them. It'd be really good for getting down in behind them and, and sort of sanding and blending in, in there and everything. Or like, um, you know, down into tight spots 
in your weapons and in your weapons bays and stuff like that. So I think it'd be really good for that. Then finally, we've got the little pointy ones and rounds we've got here. These are basically diamond burrs. You can see one is cylindrical and one is a cone. And it's basically this, you can see the cone there showing going into an intake. And these are going to go into these collets, which fit into here, like so. And then you're going to put those in. So uh, you've got two different sizes there. You've got a, um, that looks like a 1 8th and a 5.32. So uh, there we go. So that's looking good. Um, as I say, uh, oh, it's 6 watts, not 8 watts. Speed is 1,000 to 6,000 linear strokes a minute. Stroke length is 3 millimetres, so it's a very small stroke. Um, dimensions and weight, 89 grams. Lying. It's not 89 grams, 112, I just showed you. Um, structure manual, tool bits, nine handpiece rest. It's also worth noticing on the Premium Hobbies website, you can get a complete spare set of these that actually come in the box as a complete spare set. I didn't note the price, but you can actually get the uh, get them as a spare. So if you do wear them out, don't worry, you don't have to throw your tool away. You can get them. So there we go. So let's get this all connected up and see how it works. Now it's worth noting this is not a rechargeable tool. Now as I showed you earlier, you got this little Genor thing here. Now, this is great as a rechargeable tool, but it it doesn't have, you know, I can just, if I put it on maximum speed, I can still stop it. In fact, it needs charging. I've, I've killed it. But basically, I can stop that quite easily because it's got no real guts in it. Now, it has been fully charged, and I've literally used it for probably seven or eight minutes and it needs charging again and that is the problem you've got the beauty of it being rechargeable handleable light you know and all that but the problem is it's got no life and it has no guts because it you can't get it in that small package we will get there but just not yet um then you've got your benefit of like something like this which has the batteries in it so it's got a lot more torque but it doesn't have the speed so there you go. So that's you, you sort of pays your money, you take your choice. Now, if you really want to go for some of the battery power that's going to give you lots of life and good work, you need something like this. But, you know, do you really want this on the bench and be holding this on your 48 scale Spitfire while you're trying to do some sanding work or whatever? No, you don't. So basically, this is sort of a, a very good compromise. No doubt 10 years time we'll have stuff half this size, which will have as much power as this and five times more life. We're just not quite there yet. Um, brushless motor technology is helping, I know, but uh, we are getting there. So basically we've got this power supply here which needs to be plugged in. So let me get this plugged in, get it connected up, and we'll see how it works. Right, so we've got the pack of um, papers that come with it in the little plastic envelope. And I've actually had a look, I've removed the backing to find out they're actually 240 grit. So they're all the same, there's not like a selection in there. So they're a 240 grit. I uh, didn't get the name of the manufacturer, but they're probably going to be an Asian paper. But the other thing I, th I like about these, they're, they're fully self-adhesive on the back. So if you've got a flat piece of um, acrylic or something like this, you could stick this down and that'll give you a great flat piece for, you know, sanding your um, your halves or whatever of tanks or whatever, you know, a wing tanks or something like that. So, you know, th there's another use for, there's always a use for something if, if you look a bit deeper. And you can actually buy these in additional sets. This is a 600 grit. This one is a 400 grit. This one is a 240 grit. And as you can see, they open like so. So, I believe also in these you get, oh, they open all the way up. Yeah, in these you get a template as well, which is handy. So you basically put that over your sheet and then you can cut it out and it's got all the different sizes that you need for all your different um, all your different uh, sanding areas. Now that one there, I don't have. So that's a bit weird. Oh, unless it's designed to fold around. So actually you do get a fold around on that one so you get really going down into the sharp corners. So there we go. So that's what you get with those. As I say, you've got a 240 there, which is the same as we've already got. This one's a 600 and this one's a 400. You know, my favourite is 400. Don't be fooled by the 400 on there. That's just the model number of the actual sander itself. So, I've um, got Jess playing with her toys underneath my feet, if you can hear her. So, we've got the self-adhesive backing on here. What I've done here, I've, I've cut a piece out 25mm wide 
uh, which is the same width as this rectangular one and I'm just going to basically stick this on um, make sure you've got an old knife blade for cutting this out because when you cut through to the abrasive side it will literally destroy your blade you don't want to be using new blades to do this so basically there we go take that off of there and then I'm going to carefully stick this onto here I've cut it slightly too big which was intentional. The other thing you could do, of course, is peel the backing off, lay that on top of there and just cut around it. But this is this is like an ABS material, so you always risk actually damaging your um, your sanding pad. So there's that one there. That's going to go in like that. And then I've got this one here, which has been cut out for the triangular one. And we'll do some sanding into corners. We'll try that out as well. And we'll see just how useful this little tool is. Um... I don't think it's a must-have, I've got to be honest, I don't think it's something you, you have to own. Uh, but I think it's probably going to be a very handy tool to have, you know, especially for those larger jobs. So, right, let's, so we've got the on-off on here, it's all plugged in and wired up. So we can, you can see we can have it running basically, as, and it has got quite a lot of strength in it. Um, no. And basically we can, we can wind it up like so. Jess is unfortunately, she loves power tools. You should hear when I start the compressor up, she really goes. So basically, you go all the way up like that and then come down to, to basically next to nothing. Now, I think when you're on next to nothing, it's probably going to stop quite easily. So we'll just try to get my old Hunker 111 wing. So I'll put it up on sort of mid speed, which is going to be around about 3,000 strokes a minute. So you can basically just go over your wind it up a bit and you can see that's put in a very very even sanding action on there and it's very very flat and very very gentle you can see that that decal's coming through and I'm not actually sanding through the decal obviously it will do in a second but I'm not sanding through it yet and it's giving a very, very fine surface. Now this, this um, stars and bar here is actually painted on. And there's a decal underneath it. And we've got some area here where it's, the paint's been attacked. And it's actually sanding that out beautifully. So actually working around in a circle with the linear stroke is kind of giving you an orbiting action. But as you can see, it's very, very gently sanding down. It's not ripping or tearing or anything. You've got under here is a decal. You can see how gentle it is by the, you know, you've got the, the panel line detail there underneath the paint and it's not eradicating that or anything. So. I think this would be really handy for something like on the Hellcat, the 24 scale Hellcat, where you've got that horrible grainy finish on the plastic. I think this would be a wonderful tool for doing that because you don't want to be doing the long strokes, you don't want to flatten everything out, you just want to be working in one area at a time. And I think this would be absolutely ideal. Now if I wind it right up to full speed, it becomes a lot more aggressive and we'll probably find that it's yeah it's the decals clogging the, the paper and also because it's paint but it's very very difficult to show but the finish on there is beautiful that's with 240 grit and it's sort of that is all been feathered and sanded into one so we've got a decal under there we've got the paint on top of here because you've got the brown paint um, You've got the primer underneath the decal so there's you've got the plastic coming through there you've got the gray paint then you've got the decal then you've got the brown paint then you've got the blue paint and then the white paint and it's literally all feathered into one so that's something you won't get with a sanding stick it tends to sort of lift the edges but um very impressed with that very impressed with that indeed so yeah really pleased with that um now i want to try the little uh, triangular one fingers all dusty I want to try the little triangular one um, going into the going into sharp areas 
So I've got this here, which I've been using for my glue trials. So I'm going to turn it on. And I want to see what happens if you sort of bump into things. But it's quite gentle. It's not actually trying to knock it out of my hands or anything. But as you can see, I turn the speed up. You can get into those little areas and remove the paint easily without actually damaging the plastic. So as you can see, that's getting right into those corners. Let me come up closer to the camera so you can see. You're getting right into those corners. Have to keep it flat. Yeah, I'll be totally honest with you guys, when I first saw this tool, I thought, mm, what's the point? But now, I'm kind of thinking, for stuff like this, you know, if you've got a really rough finish on here, or you've done some, um, you know, you've done some cast finish, and you don't like it, you want to take it back a bit, I think this would be perfect for it. You get right into the corner there, without actually... Any damage at all. Yeah, you can go really slow if you want to, but I don't know how much effect that's going to have. It is actually sounding, as you can see, but uh, again, it's, it's we're only using the front point of the um, paper. Now I'm not sure if this will do the same as a sanding stick. If we wipe it on some denim, yeah, it's all clogged up. I've gone too fast and what I've done is melted the paint and it's clogged the paper. So that is the problem with going too fast. You can see the rest of the paper there is absolutely fine. But because it's a it's a Tamiya paint, it's just clogged it all up. And you can hear Jess down here crying, she wants to play. Okay, so just editing this in here, um, this is the Arizona I'm working on, the 200 scale one. And you can see I've put some brown Mr. Servicer in here to fill in these ejector pin marks. And I thought this would be a good example just to show how handy this little tool is for getting in little places like this. You can see we've got those little support ribs surrounding the ejector pin marks. So what I'm going to do is just put some black pen around here just so we can see where we're actually sanding. Make sure we're not sort of plowing in at all. So we'll get the sander now. You can see the other thing I've done here, I've cut a triangle from the self-adhesive material. And what I've done, I've cut it too long so that as the nose wears out, I can move it forward and trim the side. So um, I did actually put a piece of backing on there, but it's come off. But um, anyway, let's see how this goes. So I won't go too mad at first. I'll sort of set it about half speed. And then we can get into that gap and just sand. And that seems and it looks like I haven't tightened the uh, collar up. Yeah, I have. Um, okay, so go a bit faster. And you can see it's enabling us to get in there and sand that out beautifully. There we go, that's that one done. That one here is just slightly wider so we can move up the paper a bit. And yeah, it is really good for things like this. Now this one I've got, if you look on there, it's got quite a bulge on it. So it'll probably take a bit longer on this one. This uh, Mr. Surfacer has been on here about 18 hours, so it is good and hard. If you try and sand Mr. Surfacer too soon, you do end up just clogging up your abrasive, whatever it is you're using. So I've been, you know, thoughtful enough to, uh, to, to not try and do this while it's too soft. So there we go. And then on there run over that bit stay away from the nose because we need to save the nose for doing the, the little parts so that's that done and then for sprue nibs you can see it does a good job there I was thinking as well last night while I was using while I was thinking about this it'd be great if you you know some some people as you get on in life you get the shakes or whatever or you get your pins and needles in your fingers holding smaller stuff it'd be great for people like that because you're, you're just it's you're not doing any sanding motion you're just literally holding a tool 
Um, as we can see, it's making rinse meat of these ejector pin marks. And it's not kind of ploughing in or anything, it's not leaving great big divots in the plastic, which is nice. I'm going to turn the speed up a bit and see what happens. There we go. And the angle of this triangular piece is absolutely perfect for getting in this gap here. And then on that one there we can just stay flat and just sand it around. There we go, job done. So, as we can see, we've sanded out those ejector pin marks. I'm just going to do a little bit more on that one because there's a slight hint of... Go around the edge. You can remove those sprue nibs. Whoopsie daisy. And the other thing I need to do on this part is remove this splinter shield around here because um, it's going to be replaced with a piece of photo etch so we'll see how that goes we just take this off like this careful not to go too much at a time because you will shatter the plastic on a curve just take that off like that Take that off. I mean, normally I would actually cut this off, but for I would use a saw is what I mean. So we can just remove most of this material on here. And then once again, as I always show, I'm going to use my pencil, pen or something just to make a line around the inside. And then you can see when you're sanding, when you've got down to the parent material so you don't go too far. So let's see how this deals with this. Now the sandpaper is looking a little bit clogged. I'll wipe it on my piece of denim. And here we go. You can see it's a bit, uh, a bit clogged up. Of course, there's nothing stopping you using the self-adhesive matador sheets that come from Infini. Again, we can sand this out now. This little raised nub here is just for a just location for an ammo box. We're not going to worry about that too much. I've got a raised area there where the gun mount is. And this is just where the 50 cal goes on the side of the funnel. Okay, so another little job for this sander. It's still the same piece of paper, and I've done one side. Um, on here, we've got a moulded on ridge around this opening here, and that has to be removed in preparation for a piece of photo etch to go on. Um, now I know that these sides, the moulding is a bit sort of sunken in and also this is made of two halves so not only has it got sunken in you could also get this kind of effect but I want to get it nice and flat so what I've done, I've, I've gone round the edge with a magic marker and I could just now go along like this and just make some lines on here and then we can uh, come along with the, what I have noticed, I've done these two pieces here if you use the speed really high like this it tends to really sort of eat into the plastic so if you kind of go sort of 50%, which is like here, um, and then just don't put any force on it and just gently let it do its work, it really does give you a lovely finish. And remember, this is 240 grit, so you could go with a smoother paper. I am going to go slightly faster. There you go. And, that, and it's taken me literally five minutes of using this to get a feel for the speed I want. I think that's what it's going to be. It's what you're happy to work with. Um, and in the application, obviously, if you're using the point, you're going into a corner, you don't want to be tearing it out. But if you're just ripping down a ship deck or something, then you want to be going fast. But I'm just using this now. In fact, what I could do is swap over to the flat rectangular one that I used earlier. You know, this is the same piece of paper that we used earlier, so it's, you know, it's a little bit worn, it's a little bit clogged. 
So again, you can see what's happening is the it's taking down that edge. It's removing that edge, but it's also flattening out the whole thing. You can see up here we're we're touching the plastic and and, and we're actually um, flattening it out and making it all nice and straight and you can see we're sanding here but we're not touching in the middle which means this face is actually concave where it should be flat so we're actually flattening it out nicely obviously with a sanding stick you could do this but one of the issues with a sanding stick as I keep saying is when you are sanding you often get a rocking motion so it's very difficult to sand things dead flat whereas this seems to be doing a lovely job of it I think this piece of paper has seen better days, to be honest. Let's try to speed up here. It doesn't seem to be putting any heat into it at all. It's not getting warm. There we go. We've sanded that now. That's perfectly flat. Now, when we want to come around the sides, we just come along like this. Again, do the same thing around the radius. I'm going in a circular motion so I don't put any flat spots on it. As I go around. As I say, I think this paper has seen better days. And we're going to get a nice parallel, sort of cylindrical end, if you like, to the to this lookout station or whatever it is. And there we go, all the pen mark is gone. And same on the side. You have to remember guys, this is stroking this way, so if you go in like this, it hits the plastic. So if you turn it sideways, you just sand out that Mr. Surface there where I filled the, uh, there was a sink mark in there. And that should disappear. I must say the impressive thing about this is the way it's getting it so flat because it's not actually rocking, it's just a flat motion. Is Jess about to bark, I think? There we go, just keep rolling it around the edge. Then we can slow it down, just do a little finishing touch on there. Job done. And as you can see, what we've got now is a nice flat, sort of square um, face to this. You can see it's sanded out that Mr. Servicer on the ends beautifully as well. And uh, yeah, so now we've got this nice flat face. One of the things when you're using a sanding stick, it's it's great, but the, one of the troubles is you tend to kind of exaggerate it. You can tend to do this, so it's very difficult. To, if you want to get flat with a sanding stick, the best thing to do is go in one direction like so. Um, and then when you sand something like this, you would kind of on the ends go like this, but it's very difficult to get flat spots. So then you come along with a sponge, but then of course you round off the edges. Whereas this is giving you that lovely flat, square with sharp corners um, and yeah it's uh, very nice indeed you can see when we put that up against there it looks really lovely so yeah another little um, demonstration of an area it can be used it's um, effective good little tool if you have a use for it then um, I think it's going to be a really really handy tool to add to your arsenal 
uh, as I say, you know, getting in corners like that, I tend to get skinny sticks, cut the ends on an angle, and then I can get in like this. But the trouble is, you can never really get into the corner, and this will, this will get into the corner. Um, I'm thinking stuff like, you know, at the moment, I'm doing a couple of, well, I'm working on the Titanic and the Arizona, with those ship decks where you've got to remove all the detail and sand it all flat to put your um, to put your wooden decks on. Perfect for that, absolutely perfect. You know, something like that for getting in between the gaps, something like this for getting into the corners, absolutely perfect for that. Uh, and then all afterwards, if you want to paint your deck with a gloss paint to get sort of better adhesion with your um, with your sticky back decks, then you know, it'd be great for polishing them as well. Um, so yeah, I think it's got many, many uses, and it, I think it's going to be one of those tools. It's not like this is the best tool in the world, and it's you know it's something you really have to have. It's something you're going to have, and then find uses for it, and it's going to be really, really advantageous. Now the cost of it is eighty nine ninety five from Premium Hobbies in the UK. Uh, it's available, as I say, all over the world, and you can actually get it direct from. Um, Direct from uh, David Tools, David Union Company Limited. You can see it on the back of here, David Union Company Limited. You can get it direct from them according to their website. So wherever you are in the world, you can get it. But I think you'll probably find in the UK, you're better off getting it from um, Premium Hobbies. Especially if you use Premium Hobbies here. If you use my discount code, which is NMB10, Nigel's Modeling Bench 10, you will get 10% discount off that price. So that makes it... Instead of 90 quid, it's going to be 80 quid, isn't it? 82 pound or something. And then these packs of papers, you get 10 papers in each pack. Uh, and as I just showed, you get the template as well. And they are 350, which I think, I think that's a very, very reasonable price. It's going to come out three pound 15 with your with your uh, discount. But I think that's a very, very reasonable price um, for for 10 sheets of self adhesive paper. Even if you don't have one of these or want one. As I say, it's going to be great to have this, stick it to a flat sheet, you know, and then for sanding stuff flat, it's going to be perfect. Um, one of the biggest problems, people get wet and dry, they stick it on their bench, they come along they, with a tank have or something like this, and they go like this and they sand it flat, and what they don't realise is all the edges have curled up. So when you actually think you're sanding it flat, you're actually putting a, uh, a convex surface on your on your on what you want to be flat. But with it glued down, with it all held flat, it will be the same as using a, a stick. So a couple of uses for them there, even if you don't want to buy the um, the sander. So there we go, guys. So you're getting your sander. You've got all your end pieces there. You've got your little carbide, not the carbide, the uh, diamond tips there. And your, um, your stand, your power supply, and the 240 grits, 89.95. Tool packs, £3.50, and the little pin vise I showed you at the beginning, great little tool, 9 95 Again, 10% discount, it's going to be £9. So, um, all in all, a great little package of stuff. Um, as I say, this is a tool that, if you can afford it, go get one. Um, you know, if you can't afford it, you're not going to be lost without it. But if you can afford it, I think you're going to have many, many uses for it. As I say, unfortunate it's got this bloody power lead in it all the time, but if it didn't have that, it probably wouldn't last very long with a recharge. So, uh, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you all soon for another review. Bye for now.